Hello team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss about the TPRM interview questions. I come up with some questions based on the student feedback, based on my client feedback who basically face these questions in their interview jobs and I try to curate that questions with the proper response which help you to prepare for your TPRM jobs. My name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can check my LinkedIn profile. And if you're new to the channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. Okay, so we have a first question. Can you describe your experience with performing vendor security risk assessment? How do you approach evaluating uh, both new and uh, new and existing vendor see it's one of the common question which is asked in the interview and by asking this question they want to see your experience in the vendor risk assessment process so this is something a script normally i created so i'm just demonstrating them i have a 10 year of experience you can basically modify your scripts accordingly so here the intent of the question is to ask because you they want to verify your experience so how to answer this question? Uh, thank you for amazing question and definitely I want to share my experience. I have a 10 year of experience in the comprehensive vendor security risk assessment uh, across the various industries like um, finance, healthcare, uh, you can say technology, service industry. So I have a sort of experience on that particular area. Now the question is basically how I assess the vendor. So before I basically explain you the vendor and all that, this is for you those who are watching the video suppose this is the company we have company a and we have a vendor one we have a vendor two we have a vendor three so we have a second line of defense in the company a who basically assess these vendors before they onboard them because tomorrow if they do something wrong it is you who basically answerable to the customer that's why we have to do proper due diligence before we onboard them once we onboard them and if they do something wrong then you are accountable that's why nowadays companies are spending huge amount of money on the people who assess these vendors make sure they should comply with the requirements so that's why they say how do you perform so my approach will include that you know uh, by evaluating the security policy is the first thing after sending the nda because it gives the visibility about their governance and on request I will have an on-site visit to passively observe their operations activity and uh, whatever my business requirement and security controls we have based on that I will tailor the security control assessment and evaluate uh, or prepare the questionnaire based on that particular risk profile for example um, you know here what happens is if you give the example it, it, it builds the confidence among the interviewer okay huh, this guy has a knowledge so in one of the interviews, you know, my participant, my friend, my customer has basically said like this way, for example, while assessing a new cloud provider, I uncovered significant gaps in their encryption practices. So by conducting a thorough interview with their security team and we have analyzed their encryption protocols and I provide the detailed report with prioritized recommendations. So the vendor implemented these changes and leading to a substantial reduction in their overall risk score. Definitely when it comes to the data security in the cloud, it is the only way we can able to achieve with the help of data encryptions only. So this is how when you're sharing the examples and map the case studies, it can it can build some confidence among the interviewer. Okay, so let's move to the next interview question. Thank you. So next interview question is uh, describe a situation where you identified significant security risk with the third party and how do you mitigate that risk now the reason of the asking this question they want to understand your situation of how you handle the proactive risk how you handle how you overcome such kind of issues and it, it basically reflect your leadership skills so how to answer so it's, uh, my way is before i basically share the response i will start with my experience thank you for asking this question in my in my previous role as an information security manager i was engaged with the new vendor that provide the critical software solutions. Okay, so this is basically my company. Okay, this is my company. And um, this is the vendor who basically offer me a software solution. Okay, so, uh, so during the initial risk assessment, I identify a significant security risk in the software. The concern was the vendor was not uh, encrypting a sensitive data at rest nor in transit and this basically posed a major risk to our data security and threat to data security especially we are planning to move sensitive data or CRM data on the cloud. So now question is I identified so 
how i took this challenge is first is that i communicate so what i did i promptly i promptly organize a meeting with the vendor their security team to discuss the finding and i have a very clear and open communication to ensure they understand the severity of this issue and our security requirement then i did the detailed risk analysis we have a qualitative we have a quantitative analysis so i conducted a thorough analysis to identify uh, you can say um, identify potential impact of the unencrypted data and this include the potential financial reputations operational uh, you can say risk which help in making the compelling case for the uh, what you can say urgent uh, remediation then i developed the remediation plan i collaboratively we uh, i developed i developed a comprehensive remediation plan which include implementing a robust encryption protocol for data at rest and data in transit and i also provide them with our encryption standard and best practices because sometimes what happen are their encryption algorithm cannot be comply with the governance requirement because of the import and export restrictions then once i recommend them because we can only recommend it is their plan their action plan to implement then we monitor the progress so i set up regular checkups i regularly set up the meetings to monitor their progress and offer the assistance as needed and by this we ensure that you know the remediation plan stay on the track and any obstacles were promptly addressed we did the verification testing so verification is all about whether it met the document requirement and testing is all about it's working effectively so once the vendor has implemented the necessary encryption measure we conducted a follow up assessment to verify the controls were effective and this include like reviewing their encryption methods conducting a pen test ensuring the compliance with the industry st security standard and uh, one more important thing i did here is uh, which is missing here is that uh, i did the continuous improvement so i work with the vendor to establish the ongoing monitoring and regular security audit and this is not only ensure the sustained compliance but also help in building the stronger more secure partnership moving forward so the way i took this communication like i communicated i did the detailed risk analysis and i recommend them because by end of the day if something happen on their side you are the one who accountable to the company so this is why we need to prioritize that okay so this is how you need to handle the particular question so let's move to the next question thank you okay next interview question how do you prioritize um which risk to be addressed first when conducting a third party risk assessment it's again a very good question it tests your subject matter knowledge and it also tests your knowledge toward the vendor assessment and that is why they want to know your knowledge on this area it's a very common question so how to answer so thank you for asking this question and uh, my when i'm conducting a third party assessment um prioritizing which risk to address first is crucial for effective risk management i do understand because ultimate goal of risk management is to reduce risk to an acceptable level but my approach um to prioritize uh, involves some kind of a methodology so when you say this word methodology governance it shows okay they are mature toward this process okay so my approach is to prioritize involve structured methodology because based on the potential impact and likelihood of each risk combined with the understanding of our organization risk tolerance and strategy objective you can able to carry forward so when you use this word risk tolerance risk capacity okay structured methodology people definitely love it because you're talking about the governance language so here what i'm going to do is i will first identify that potential risk okay first i identify the potential risk which is associated with the third party and i will categorize them based on the nature nature can be the operational impact okay data impact or compliance impact then i will basically use a standardized you can say a um, risk assessment framework to ensure the consistency and comprehensiveness will be there like 27005 from the information security point of view or 31001 now once i identify this i will move to the next part which is called as a impact analysis so i will what i'm going to do is i will going to um i will assess the potential impact of each identified risk on an organization this include evaluating a potential financial operational reputation legal consequences i also for instance risk could lead to a major data breach affecting a customer information so we have to classify that as a high impact so that's something i will do that then i will also go for the likelihood assessment i try to determine the likelihood of each risk material is by the multiple factors such as vendor past performance industry trends and inherent vulnerabilities for example vendor with the history of security incidents or operating in a high risk factors or high risk sector would have a high likelihood of rating so that is something i will look for then i will basically use a risk matrix to combine the impact and likelihood score to calculate a risk rating for each identified risk and this matrix help in visualizing and prioritizing a risk which is also called as a heat map and we definitely high impact let's say example like this is how we creating the matrix 
so we have a likelihood and impact so if i say 5 1 2 3 4 5 1 2 3 4 5 if i say 5 into 5 so it will be become a 25 so 25 is the maximum risk here so this is kind of a heat map we can create okay so high impact high likelihood high impact and high likelihood okay need to be prioritized first followed by those with a higher impact or high likelihood so that's something we will look for then we also look for the concept of aligning with the organization objectives so i ensure the prioritization align with our organization strategic objectives and risk appetite so when you use this word called strategic objective risk appetite it gives some some kind of a sense of scenario to the interviewer okay the person know about enterprise risk management also those who are not aware about the risk appetite it is a level of risk the organization willing to take for the project for instance if you understand a particular sensitive to the regulatory compliance risk and it is related to the non-compliance would be given the higher priority so that is something we align with the organization objectives and based on that identify risk i will allocate the resource that is basically required uh, that that can be done here and uh, because resource allocation is very important so we can have sometime cross-functional team to address the high priority risk and implement the quick win to reduce the exposure and i finally do the regular review where the risk prioritization is not a one-time activity so it requires regular review to make sure risk should not go beyond the appetite so for that i will establish the communication method so this is how i will basically prioritize the risk first when conducting a third party assessment so let's move to the next question thank you okay so another interview question how do you ensure third party risk assessments are conducted consistently and thoroughly because that is one of the best way you can able to mitigate the risk if you're integrating a risk assessment uh, a third party risk assessment in the process you can able to manage the risk and that is why one of the common question asked in the interview jobs is how do you ensure third party risk assessments are conducted consistently and thoroughly now by asking this question they want to test your knowledge on how much you upgrade yourself what is your perspective what due diligence how proactively you manage the vendors and all that so how to answer such question so thank you for asking this question so you know ensuring the third party risk assessments are conducted consistently and thoroughly is very important but uh, how to do that let me explain you with the reference here so normally what happen in my case so this is how i'm i'm starting okay in my case i i always prefer to use 27001 or 27005 okay or nist depending upon the uh, client and because by using this kind of frameworks okay it, they have already a predefined criterion guideline for assessing the various risk factors and by using a procedures or common methodology you can ensure that all assessments are comprehensive and uniform now once i have this i will go for the detailed assessment checklist i develop a detailed assessment checklist that cover all the critical areas such as data security regulatory operational incident response but i will make sure i will not have a huge shallow checklist so this checklist basically serve as a guide for assessment team to ensure that you know no aspect is basically overlook then once i done with that i will go for the training and guideline so i will provide thorough training and clear guideline to all my team members who involved in risk assessment process i will do the workshop documentations regular updates on the best practices right recently what happened we have a new amendment is coming like dora and uh, we have a dpdp in india so according to that i will guide my team member so when you say such kind of a statement it reflect that you are update you are update you you are up to date with the new things and all that so by providing a training we can ensure that everyone understand the process and criteria which helps to maintain the consistency then i will also use some kind of an automation tools to facilitate the risk assessment process if the budget is there and by using these tools i can able to streamline my data collection process uh, uh data collection process then uh, you, uh, you know i will reduce the errors ensure the assessments are conducted systematically so that is something i will look for then i will also go for the regular audits and reviews so i maintain uh, i implement the process for regular audits like in six months or seven months depending upon the uh, which kind of a critical process handled by the vendor and this involves checking thoroughness and accuracy of the complete assessments we also have a peer review 
and external audits which can provide the additional assurance on of quality and consistency so that's something we will do i'm not saying for every process we do regular audit if we have a financial process has been outsourced if we have a data privacy process has been outsourced we always do audit on every you know six months and all that then we can we keep all this document in the centralized locations so that in my absence someone can follow so if you're having a centralized repository we ensure information is easily accessible and assessment process is basically transparent along with that we have a clear communications and collaboration that is another important thing so i i always foster a clear communication and collaboration among all the stakeholders who involved uh, in the risk assessment process so i will give an example in my previous role where i implemented a standard risk assessment framework based on a nist guideline and developed the comprehensive checklist and provide the training sessions to ensure team will be well versed with the process and we also integrate an automated risk assessment with the help of grc archer and all that to maintain this consistency we conducted regular peer review external audits and this approach led me through uh, through the thorough risk assessment process and reduce the overall risk so by following all these steps i ensure that you know third party risk assessments are conducted consistently and thoroughly and it also provide some kind of a robust security posture so when you say such kind of a statements and when you bring such kind of an experience it it build more confidence and all that so let's let's move to the next interview question thank you so next interview question can you provide an example of a time when you had to update or revise security guideline due to the new regulatory requirement or emerging threats uh it's it's it, it depend upon what kind of a positions you are applying tprm but they just want to understand according to situation how you handle the issue that is the reason they ask such kind of a question so in my case i prepared the script for that so i said like this way thank you for asking this question in 2018 when there is an introduction of gdpr in the eu i was part of one company and you know we need to comply with gdpr and we want vendors to be comply so that is how we have we have to update our policy so as a new information security manager at my organization i led this initiatives to update our security guideline to ensure fully full compliance with gdpr so here what i did is um, i will first i begin by conducting a thorough analysis of gdpr i try to understand the key provisions such as data subject rights data breach notifications and all the data protections principles and all that then i i went for the gap assessment what we have and what we need to implement so we can have a thorough review of data handling procedures consent management data access control incident response plan then i involve the stakeholders i engage with the key stakeholders across the organization including the legal team compliance team id team and this collaboration was a crucial for developing a comprehensive practical guideline and then according to that update my security guideline let's say example Uh, one of the security guideline was uh, like enhancing data encryptions implement robust data uh, subject consent management system establish procedures incorporate the dpi and then we had a training and awareness where i conduct the extensive training session for the employees to ensure they understand the new guidelines and this include tailor sessions for a different department and finally i monitor the compliance uh, we implemented automated tools to track concerned with and data access logs and conduct the periodic review to identify and address all the non conformity issues promptly so this is how i make sure i will comply with the legal requirement and i will also make the vendor also to comply with this requirement because i updated this requirement to a vendor and vendor has update the functions so this is how i basically overcome the challenge so team this is all from my side how do you find this particular sessions do let me know in the comment section so it help me to build my things more better and build more better and better content which create a value for you please note without you i'm nothing so your feedbacks if you new to the channel do subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss the future videos on similar topic i'm also coming with the iso 27001 series where i'm going to discuss about each and every clause in detail so do do watch that video also and for that you have to subscribe and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss the future videos on a similar topic good day bye